President Joe Biden has set ambitious goals for fighting climate change. He aims to cut U.S. carbon emissions in half by 2030 and to have a net zero carbon economy by 2050. On my very first day in office, I took action to return the United States to the Paris Agreement. Since then, our administration has been hard at work on locking clean energy breakthroughs to drive down the cost of technologies that will require us to do to achieve net zero emissions. And working with the private sector on the next generation of technologies that will power clean economy of the future. The plan requires electricity generation to be carbon free by 2035. But to generate so much clean electricity is going to be a challenge. In 2019, 62% of American electricity was generated by burning fossil fuels. Natural gas and coal alone were responsible for generating 61% of the total electricity. All of this electricity will need to be replaced with clean electricity before 2035 if the U.S. wants to achieve a net zero carbon economy by 2050. And while electricity generation from renewables like solar, wind, and hydroelectric power has grown faster than expected, measuring around 20% of the total electricity, it's still not enough. The only way to stop and reverse warming is to cut greenhouse gas emissions to zero. In February. The EIA projected that renewables were on track to produce more than 40% of the total electricity by 2050, which is a remarkable growth, but still well short of what's needed to decarbonize the grid by 2035 and forestall the climate crisis. This daunting challenge has recently led some environmentalists to reconsider an alternative they had long been wary of: nuclear power. Nuclear power has a lot going for it. Its carbon footprint is equivalent to wind, less than solar, and orders of magnitude less than coal. Nuclear power plants take up far less space on the landscape than solar or wind farms, and they produce power even at night or on calm days. In 2020, they generated a fifth of the total electricity. But despite all this, the number of working nuclear reactors in the U.S. has been declining. The amount of electricity produced by nuclear power plants in the U.S. has plateaued in the last 20 years. The majority of American nuclear plants today are approaching the end of their design life, and only one has been built in the last 20 years. Earlier this year, Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York shut down after decades of protests. So why is America so far behind on nuclear power, and why is nuclear power so unpopular in the U.S.? In the post-World War II era, the Atomic Energy Commission was created to explore peaceful opportunities for the same nuclear materials the U.S. used in Japan at the end of the war. Electricity generation from commercial nuclear power plants in the U.S. began in 1958. Today, the United States has 94 operating commercial nuclear reactors at 56 nuclear power plants in 28 states. The average age of American power plants, which are licensed to run for 40 years, is 39. In the last decade, at least five power plants have been retired early, largely because maintenance costs and cheaper sources of power made them too expensive to operate. The most recent closure came on April 30, when the second of two reactors was shut down at the Indian Point power plant on the Hudson River north of New York City. Until a few years ago, those reactors had supplied a quarter of the city's power. While environmental opposition may have been the primary force hindering nuclear development in the 1980s and 90s, now the biggest challenge may be costs. Few nuclear power plants have been built in the U.S. recently because they are very expensive to build here, which makes the price of their energy high. This graph shows that cost of electricity generated by nuclear power plants is higher than solar, wind, or even coal. Modern-day reactors have become increasingly expensive to build, costing around five to ten billion dollars. 
Advanced nuclear reactors are estimated to cost $5,366 for every kilowatt of capacity. That means a large 1 gigawatt reactor would cost around $5.4 billion to build. But it wasn't always like this. In the late 1960s, overnight construction costs for new reactors had dropped to $600 to $900 per kilowatt in today's money. But then, things got messy. As utilities ordered more reactors, supply chains for parts and skilled labor became stressed, causing delays and cost hikes. Meanwhile, both industry and environmentalists were finding new safety issues to deal with. Early core cooling systems had flaws and required upgrades. The reactors also needed earthquake contingency plans. The process unfolded haphazardly. Rules and requirements sometimes changed midway through construction, and that meant delays. And delays are crippling for any big labor-intensive project. Idling workers and equipment can lead to massive budget overruns. By the early 1970s, nuclear construction costs had risen to $2,500 per kilowatt in today's money, which is about the cost of modern wind farms. Then, nuclear power suffered a mortal blow after the much-publicized but non-fatal meltdown at Three Mile Island in 1979. The accident occurred here at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant a dozen miles south of Harrisburg. At about 4 o'clock this morning, two water pumps that help cool reactor number 2 shut down. Officials say some 50 to 60,000 gallons of radioactive water escaped into the reactor building. Every reactor still under construction at the time, which is 51 in total, suddenly faced major regulatory delays, changes in safety procedures, and new backfit requirements. Construction times doubled, stretching out past 10 years. Costs went through the roof past $7,000 per kilowatt for some reactors. After that, nuclear power in the United States was in deathbed. Utilities, scared off by soaring costs and stagnating electricity demand, canceled more than 120 reactor orders. The wave of utility deregulation that started in the 1970s disfavored large and expensive plants. Not a single new reactor began construction between 1978 and 2013 because the costs associated were just too high. Industry groups blame overzealous environmentalists. Opponents countered that the reactors were inherently unsafe and cost overruns were a natural consequence. What's notable, however, is that other countries had very different experiences with nuclear. The cost of nuclear power in Asia has been a quarter or less of new bills in the West. South Korea, in fact, managed to reduce the costs associated with nuclear power over time. South Korea had an advantage in that it didn't start entirely from scratch. The country imported proven US, French, and Canadian designs in the 1970s and learned from other countries' experiences before developing its own domestic reactors in 1989. It developed stable regulations, had a single utility overseeing construction, and built reactors in pairs at single sites. As I mentioned in the last video, the cost of solar technology plummeted because of the process called learning by doing. The same thing happened in South Korea in the case of nuclear power. Unstable regulations that are constantly changing are the biggest hurdles that the US nuclear power industry faces today and has faced for the last 50 odd years. Standardizing reactor designs and building the same reactor many times is the key to reducing costs. The future of nuclear power will depend in part on how well it can balance a grid that increasingly relies on renewables. It's fairly difficult to say where nuclear power will stand in 2035. But if the current trends continue, it's not going to be anywhere close to where it should be.